starting off, uh, basically, I just wanted to, I, I think I already briefly introduced myself, but uh, right. if it's all right, if you could briefly introduce yourself, um, then yeah. we could start off there. All right. Sounds good. I'm uh, Dave Williamson from Atlanta, Georgia, freelance photographer, been photographing soccer for, we'll say heavily for the past five, six years. I've uh, worked with few colleges, the Atlanta Silverbacks, when Atlanta SC was in the NISA League. I worked with them. Um, I've worked with some publications such as Urban Pitch. Currently, I'm with Club 11 and just covering U.S. soccer and any soccer that comes through the Southeast at this point. Wow. That's actually phenomenal. So you obviously have a, a wide range of experience. Yeah. yeah. It's, I've played since I was about eight. I still try to play occasionally hurts a little more every day, but I'll go out for an occasional charity tournament or something. Um, but it was easier for me to jump into the coaching and photography side and run with it that way instead of trying to kill myself playing anymore. Okay. Wow. <laughs> so, so going back to that, uh, you said you've played since you were eight. Could you walk us through your, your soccer experience from a player perspective um, when you were eight, when you started, when you really fell in love with the game? Um, my grandmother actually took me to a Atlanta Chiefs game when they were still in Atlanta. I mean, we're looking at probably the late, early 80s, probably. And I saw it, and I was like, I don't want to be the guy that runs around. I just want to play goalie. I was like, that looks fun. And so we found a uh, – club for me to join it was now I guess now it's called Decatur to Cab Wolves it was just Decatur YMCA back then right but started playing with them and was a keeper didn't want to play in the field I think a couple of times I have played in the field and I realized no nah, I don't like that I'd rather I'd rather be out here and be between the post and dealing with having to run and do everything else so it's kind of I played all the way through high school. Um, didn't Still try as to, a goalkeeper? Sorry. Yeah, as a keeper okay. the whole time. Okay. Even now, if I do a charity tournament, I'll play as a keeper. Um, I did one game, I think. I played striker just for fun, just to see what it was like. And I was like, oh, I, don't, I don't really like this. I'd rather play right. keeper. There's, it's more fun back there. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it's just – I've kind of – it's been a part of my life. Um, it helped me get into college with the fact that I was a uh, kicker for our football team in high school and got recruited to play at uh, Georgia Southern. Okay. Played a year there and then decided, eh, college really isn't for me and kind of went and just went into the working world at that point. And, and, and uh, going back to that comment you made um, about you being a keeper – or yeah. uh, not a keeper, a kicker, I'm sorry. Yeah. So – how easy was it for you to transition your game from soccer to um, your game as a kicker? It wasn't too bad. I mean, it's still the same body mechanics. Um, it's really more of a uh, – you have more pads on and yeah. dealing with the helmet, shoulder pads, and then guys three or four times your size looking at you going, eh, he's easy to hit. I mean, right. I took a few hits, and I don't ever want to do that again. So, <laughs> but it wasn't – I mean, it wasn't bad. It's still all the same mechanics. So, Wow. Um, so, tell, tell me more about your, your year at Georgia Southern. Like, break it down. How'd it go? Did you get time to play soccer at all? I know you're yeah. obviously a college football player, a D1 yeah. athlete to be exact. That, that's pretty – it pretty much takes up most of your time, so I'm sure you didn't Yeah, have it was. Um, it was more um, – I was redshirted that year, so basically I just – I went to practices and then sat in the stands or on the sideline, wherever it was for the games, depending on the games where we went. Um, I did travel to one game that year. That was when Georgia Southern was still uh, – I guess it would be – it was one double A then. It wasn't even mm -hmm. D1. Well, I guess it was still D1, but – it was the lower division of D1. Yeah. They played Florida State that year, and that was the only time I traveled, and we went to that game. And that was a um, 
eye-opening experience to say the least. Uh, you really find out what Division One football players are like when you see like the I guess that would have been ninety-one at Florida yeah. State. So there were some big boys there. There were some. <laughs> there were some. Uh, Big country fed boys is what I'll call them. Look like they could pick up a cow and throw it without a problem. Right. <laughs> so yeah, it was kind of crazy, but it was, it was a lot of work. I mean, any kind of college athlete, I feel like is a job. I mean, you go to school, but you actually playing is a job because you're making money for the school. You're just not making it for yourself. Right. And the way they have your life structured out through that whole time, it's, I mean, you know, you're, you have weight room, then you have study halls, you have training, you have more study halls, then you have class. And then if you have to travel, you still have to do all that while you're on the road. So it's, you know, it's, it's a job. I mean, oh yeah. I, I respect anybody who plays and especially nowadays. I mean, now training is so much more intensive. I mean, we would train up until, the end of football season they give us a few months off but i'm hearing now you know these guys train year round and you know christmas break you go home for the few days of christmas and then you're back working again so that was pretty much my uh college and i was kind of you know i don't know if college is for me so. <laughs> and then you so so now you leave college and we're at this point right now um was it like months after college you got your first uh, photography gig or how did no. you get into that? How'd you adjust? I've always, you know, I've always had a camera with me. Yeah. No matter what I've done, even I was on your book in high school, did stuff like that. Um, didn't really, you know, didn't think of it as a profession until honestly, maybe 10 years ago. Huh. And I mean, I did it, you know, like a lot of people do as a hobby. And then, you know, you have people all the time going, oh, your stuff's really good. You should, you know, try to, you know, try to sell this, try to make money at it. And then I'm like, nah, I don't want to do that. Then one day I'm just like, you know what? Working for myself wouldn't be bad. Right. Um, I still don't work 100% for myself. But at the same time, it's everything I do is revolving around photography. So even my full-time job is photography. So it may be for somebody else, but you know, hey. It's still, it's a job in photography. Um, but it's definitely a, um, it's been a passion of mine since I was little too. I mean, soccer and photography have kind of gone, you know, hand in hand. I feel like probably around 10 or 11 is when I got my first camera. Wow. And it was just a little like cheap 20, $30, 35 millimeter camera that, you know, people would be like today, you know, oh, that's just a toy camera. But right. back then, that was like the greatest thing to me. You know, I'd go through a roll of film a week and be like Christmas Day. And when that came back from the development, I'd be like, oh, hey, I actually got <laughs> one or two decent photos out of this, you know, 24 roll. Right. So, um, I didn't really start with sports photography until I guess I started realizing my body couldn't play as, at the level I wanted to anymore and like Sunday leagues and stuff. And so I basically was like, let's try shooting soccer. I mean, I understand the game. I know what happens in the game. I know where to place myself to get the best angles and so forth like that. And just started playing around with it and just slowly progressed. Huh. So like, where did, what was your first like professional gig for soccer that you, um, my, first, my first real paid photography would have been the silverbacks the atlanta silverbacks from the nasl um i got a few times i got to go out on the field a few times and shoot with just a media credential um and would give the team kind of almost like on a spec type thing you know the team wants to see what you can do at that time i didn't really have a portfolio i had kind of bs'd my way into a few things in other sports um and gotten some professional experience that way I, in fact, the first time I shot rugby, it was with like teams 
So with the Canadian national team, the English national team, like the top 10 or 12 teams in the world were playing right outside of Atlanta. And I was like, yeah, I know how to shoot rugby. Sure. <laughs> I'd never seen a game of rugby in my life and kind of BS my way in. And next thing you knew, I got decent shots. It was kind of like, if, if you can follow the ball, that's what sports photography is. Right. So, um, but the Silverbacks were the first people that kind of gave me a shot at actually photographing and getting paid on a uh, regular basis. So it was kind of nice. It was the hometown team at the time. This is prior to Atlanta United. And yeah. there were a lot of, I mean, I don't think people realize how many talented players were back in the NASL. So, Tons. Yeah, I mean, some of them still around. You got Jaime Chavez, uh, Junior Burgos, uh, Stuart Seuss is in NISA now. Mm -hmm. um, that's the three main ones I can remember because I just saw them this weekend at a tournament in Atlanta but I mean you know those were names that back then were like the household names in Atlanta for the soccer community wow wow and um what what was your goal after that after you knew like because you said you started with rugby really that was your first yeah thing. that was kind of the it was just a random thing to get into and I was doing a lot of right. high school stuff but I was like I'm I'm tired of shooting high school. I want to shoot something a little faster, a little more fun, a right. little more high profile. And I saw that come to, I just happened to see it. And I'm like, sure, I'll apply for a media credential. Let's see what happens. <laughs> and and eventually it all just came into play. And everything yeah, started just, going well. You, you, I mean, with this industry, you have to learn that people are going to tell you no sometimes. And right. you just get used to hearing the word no. And if you can deal with being told no you're fine I mean you can kind of go with it from there um, so like what what would you say um from an outsider's perspective um how has the soccer community since you've kind of gotten inside inside access um in the southeast alone I mean it's exploded I mean you're looking at what 2022 you'll have four mls teams within the southeast with nashville charlotte atlanta well five orlando and miami yeah i mean you're looking at five teams in mls and you know what seven years ago there wasn't there wasn't a single mls team in the southeast no so i mean it's i think it's exploded but i also think there's a like there's a huge talent pool in the southeast um Maybe not so much with the male uh, side of the sport as the females. I mean, the girls' side of the sport down here has so much talent. You you think about it, um, Emily Sonnet, Kelly O'Hara, yeah. Morgan Bryan are all from Georgia. Those three alone, yeah. I mean, we're looking at three national team players right there, plus countless others that have come from – I mean, Florida is a hotbed for, like, female soccer talent. Oh, yeah. And I think it's, you know, we're looking at one NWSL team in the Southeast right now. I mean, I think the NWSL is maybe missing a mark by not throwing a team down here. I mean, you got Orlando, but you still, I mean, give a shot in Birmingham or, you know, uh -huh. maybe a smaller market that could, I mean, could potentially explode like a, I mean, what, Sky Blue or a Chicago. I mean, it could be rival that. Um, the new LA team should be interesting, but it's going to be interesting the fact that it has so much money behind it with all the Hollywood people that have invested in it. Right. But I mean, it's, I feel like the Southeast is a huge area for growth. Um, you know, I'm looking at the UPSL teams down here. I mean, there's one league I think that has, it's just a Metro Atlanta league or North Georgia league. And I think it has 12 or 15 teams in it. Exactly. They're playing on a weekly basis. I mean, <clears> the <throat> USL two has some teams here now. USL one has a few teams in Georgia. I just feel like it's grown even from when I first, first game I saw, I mean, I would have never thought we would have had, the amount of professional teams as we have. And I mean, I'll look at UPSL up. I mean, that's still division four, but I mean, it's still considered professional. So, or semi-professional. 
but I mean, there, I would have never expected the amount of teams that we have right now. I mean, it's just, wow. to me, it's kind of mind blowing. Wow. And does that, I don't know, does that, the, the professional side of things really connect with the youth side of things and the, the charitable organizations and all that, but, or does it not really go work together? I think like it that? does. I mean, I'm noticing um, actually the two kids that play in Campbellsville that I know mm-hmm. came from uh, the charity I work with, Soccer in the Streets. They were products of that. They played at one of the high schools, but also played for the team, which is a uh, basically a free-to-play team it's you know we're not going by the u.s model of pay to play um and those two kids uh one of them is from ethiopia and the other one is from uh elvis is going to kill me but i think it's tanzania i'm not 100 percent sure i can't remember those kids like excelled i mean they were i think they were all county both of them they played on a team that went to the state championship comes from a high school where there's they don't have a lot but that charity linked in with Atlanta United also linked into that little community in Clarkston. And it really has brought everything up. I do see Atlanta United giving back to the community, which is nice. Um, we have the uh, public transportation down here, the train stations. We now have three fields built at three train stations. They're uh, many size pitches, five, five or seven aside pitches and the 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 eventual goal is to have 10 at 10 different stations and have a league for underprivileged kids so they don't have to pay and the transportation side of it is where a lot of kids lack they don't have the parents the parents may not have the ability to get them there but with this with the uh, grants from Atlanta United and everywhere else they've been able to give these kids transportation cards so they can get on the train, go to the station, play the, you know, play the game they want to play. You know, they're out there playing soccer and having fun and that's wonderful learning teamwork and everything else all at the same time. Um, so there's a lot of, I see a lot of positives. Um, Nashville seems to, I've started dealing a lot more with Nashville going up there and, you know, photographing some of their games. Their community seems to be rallying behind that team and, I'm slowly seeing things developing in that city as well. And are you, is your plan to stay in Atlanta long-term? You know, I was born and raised here. I lived out in Portland for about a year and a half. Um, It's, I mean, it's home. My, I guess my plan, if I could really make it happen, is to have a house here, but basically live out of an RV majority of the year and just travel Travel. around and photograph soccer and write stories and you know basically tell stories of some players that no one may know so no that that that's a dream (laughs) that's the dream I mean that's the dream that's the goal so yeah wow um, and so now like as a big I didn't really open up about this before but as a big Atlanta United fan um, right. I actually, I, I lived in Chattanooga, Tennessee for a year. So we'd all okay. then commute to um, the Atlanta United games about like yeah. two years ago. Okay. Um, I was at the game when uh, Giovinco, I'm not sure if you remember, he tied it up 2-2. Yep. Um, also, in addition I think that was that, one of the I, last I, I games Giovinco. of the season too. I oh, yeah. Say, I think I want, I want to say it was the last day of the season. Yes, it was insane. I mean, it was insane. That may have been the game. If I'm thinking of the right one, that may have been the game where whenever um, uh, Altador or Bradley touched the ball, the entire stadium just booed. Yep. I mean, it was like every single time they touched the ball. Yes, I, I remember that. I, I, yeah, I that was kind of crazy. That. I mean, it was a, that was an amazing game. I mean, I've, I've seen some amazing games with Atlanta United. Um, I was at their – We'll call it their first game when they played Chattanooga FC up in Chattanooga. Oh, shit. I mean, that was when they wore the red and black stripe, the the five the original five stripe kick, the first half, and then they introduced the away kit in the second half. Uh-huh. Um, but those, I mean, I've pretty much photographed every single game for them. Really? Like for some publication or someone 
for the last four years. I've been kind of splitting time this season with going up to Nashville just because sometimes you want a little change of scenery. Right. <laughs> trying to do, trying to branch out a little more, do some USL stuff. Um, in fact, I'm going to Chattanooga's game this weekend for USL one and then going to Greenville on Sunday for USL one game. Oh, really? Yeah. I mean, sometimes you just got to travel and get out. I mean, COVID's had me kind of cooped up and I'm ready to shoot some games out of the city. Right. So, um, I know my, uh, my uh, co-owner, uh, he just mentioned to me, he actually played in Peachtree. Um, oh, MOBA? He played for, uh, I think it was USL too. Yeah, so um, Peachtree City MOBA? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Um, and he was just mentioning that, and that just brought memories to my head of, like, being in the South and stuff. Like, the culture is unbelievable. I did not know before I hit the South that your soccer culture was that strong and beautiful. Um, it's, it's amazing. It's really developed and exploded since Atlanta United. Um, I mean, if you've been to an Atlanta United game, you've probably been to some of the tailgates, and they could rival any college football game any day. Oh, yes. I remember, I guess it was last – yeah, it was last year. Uh, Mexico came and played Venezuela. And I – this was my first time doing like a real – besides a U.S. national team game, like a real uh, national team game with something besides the U.S., I was blown away at, like, the, the country, the the pride they have in their countries. I mean, the, the Mexican fans were there. Oh, God, it must have been noon or 1 o'clock for an 8.30 kickoff. And it was like a straight-up street party. The food was amazing. They had bands playing the entire time. They had a stage built. I mean, I was just kind of like, I, I need to start going to more national team games. These are fun. I'm, <laughs> what have I been missing? What have I done? I've kind of missed out on life. I mean, I've done a couple of U.S. women's games. I've done one U.S. men's game. But I was just like, I'm going to have to start finding these uh, games and going to them. These are fun. And, like, so. obviously – Obviously, the more you do things, the more you build connections and strengthen your network. Right. Um, so how, how, how grateful would you say you are for the network that you built um, now from the beginning, since the beginning? Honestly, it's funny because I'm, let's see, the uh, Greenville Union Omaha game on Sunday. Uh -huh. I'm actually interviewing a player from each team. One's tomorrow, one's Friday but I know both of them from the silverbacks and it was like, Oh yeah, we'll do it. No problem. And it's the connections I've built since, I mean, I guess that was five, probably five years ago. I started with the silverbacks, maybe six. I don't even remember. Time's kind of flown by, but you know, the connections I've made through there. And I mean, it's, it's helped me build through everything else. I mean, you know, with club 11, same thing, you know, we've built a lot of, I've built a lot of connections that way as well. Um, Rodney Wallace, I, literally I met Rodney Wallace after in Atlanta, New York city, uh, or yeah, the New York city, New York, uh, was it Red Bull? no NYCFC. Yeah. I met him after one of the games. And I was like, Hey man, I was a big fan of yours out of Portland. And then ever since then we had talked back and forth and then I was like, Hey, uh, you wouldn't want to maybe do an interview one day, would you? And he's like, Oh yeah, we can do that. I was like, that's the easiest I've ever, like, you're Rodney Wallace. You've won an MLS Cup. You were an MLS Comeback Player of the Year. Like, you right. really want to do an interview with me? Really? You sure about this? <laughs> but it was kind of cool. I mean, it's it's definitely, and you, it makes you realize these people who are playing this game on a daily basis are nothing but people who like you and me. They just want to play soccer and they love the game. They just get paid a lot more than we do to do it. Right. <laughs> so... <laughs> I mean, it's definitely fun. Um, I mean, if I could get those connections to get two or three interviews, I have two or three that are on my bucket list. If we could knock those out, I'm good to go. Right. Uh, I'd actually think I'd actually think about retiring. You know, like I'm done. I'm good. I don't want to do any more soccer. No more interviews. No more games. No nothing. So, as soon as I um, <laughs> that's yeah. funny. Um. So, 
um, moving more towards the, the closing side of this interview. Um, what, uh, my first question is, what is it like being around athletes such as Joseph Martinez or um, Miguel Almiron? I know he's not there anymore, but when I when I went to the games, they were yeah. both there. Like, what was it like that that inaugural season? What was the feeling? What was it like being on the pitch, taking pictures? Like, just just go it's, through the feelings of that. So it's funny. A friend of mine was a team photographer at the time, and he called me one day and was like, "Hey, what are you doing?" I'm like. Um, I don't know. I think I was watching TV at the time. He goes, I need an assistant for the day to do all the team headshots and stuff. Yeah. So I was like, sure. I was like, am I getting paid? And he's like, absolutely. You know, and I'm like, excellent. That was actually a really eye opening. Cause like Yamil Assad, I have oh, never Assad, seen, I, forgot about him. Oh, I mean, that guy had a smile that was almost contagious. He smiled and you're like, you almost had to smile because he was smiling and they were all humble. I mean, even Joseph Martinez was our last person we photographed that day. Um, he was just, you know, he came in from Torino. It was this guy who's just come in from Syria. Ah, you're like, Oh my God, this is going to be amazing. And I'm like, this guy is just like any other guy. Um, it, it was fun. There was a lot of fun moments, a lot of fun moments that year. Um, that was one of my highlights was, you know, kind of getting that one-on-one -on -one introduction to him and being like, Hey, how you doing? Um, but yeah, I mean, it was, it was crazy that year. You knew there was something special. You definitely knew there was something special. Wow. That's awesome. And um, my closing question. Okay. All what, right. what advice would you give to, um, young ones, regardless if they want to be um, photographers or videographers in the future, or even a professional soccer player, because I'm sure you have that that experience now being around all of those guys that you can answer that too. Um, what would you tell them? Um, establish what your goal is and don't stop until you get there. People are going to tell you no along the way. People are going to tell you that may not happen. Well, you kind of have to look at them and go, hmm, I'm going to make it happen. I had an English teacher that told me, please don't ever go into journalism. Huh. I sent her right after I had my first published article, I sent it to her and she was like, eh, I was wrong. I was like, exactly. So whatever anybody tells you, don't let anybody tell you that you can't achieve what you want. That's the, uh, the biggest thing. People are going to tell you no along the way, but just because one person tells you no doesn't mean somebody else isn't going to tell you yes. Right. And that's, that's the best advice I can give basically for anything in life. If you want to be a pro, if you want to be a professional photographer, videographer, right. anything. So. Right. Well, geez, that, that was honestly <laughs> well said um, uh, for me. I'm like a big fanboy of Atlanta United. So just having a, an interview with you in general is amazing. And it's, it's a blessing for us. Um, obviously we're just young in our little business. We're starting here. We're playing. It's, playing it's business, so, you know, it can grow. That's the way you gotta look at it. Just keep going with it and it'll grow. All right. Um, let me, I mean, I'm always down to do whatever for you guys help out. So. Yes, sir. And, and definitely we'll, we, we have a, like Tuesday, our professional days. So we would love any, we'll, we'll keep asking for photos, but like, okay. we just go, we've been through your photos and we're just like, it, they're jaw dropping, man. Like they're honestly and see, there's times I look at mine and I'm like, Oh, cause I'll look at another photographer on Instagram that I follow. And I'm like, Oh, that's what I need to be doing. I mean, it all, it, things click like, you see one level and then you want to be here. And as soon as you get to that level, you want to be here. Right. And it's like, it's always a growth thing. I mean, I feel like every day I'm trying to learn something new. Right. So, well, no, well, yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I honestly, like I said, um, we're grateful for this interview and thank hey, you so much. And it. we will, we definitely want to be friends with you. I hope, uh, I hope we start off a good man. relationship. Absolutely, um, man. I mean, I'll be up in uh, Columbus, Ohio soon. I mean, really? Well, yeah. you can't say that. There's a lot of people on our team from Ohio, so we'd love to 
Hey, I'm if we trying, could ever link up with you, we'd love to do something. Definitely, something man. Like Let's that. try to figure it out. I'm going to try to come up for the Columbus Atlanta game on, I think it's November the 8th. November the 8th? Yeah. So okay. we'll try to figure something out. That sounds like something. Well, Dave, thank you so much. And um, right, I appreciate it. Hey, thanks yeah. for having me on. Yeah. Have a blessed one. All right. You too. Thank you. Bye-bye. Right, bye.